Uh, I would like to start thinking about uh, which is the main elements that inspire you to make this short movie because what really impressed me that is that in just 15 minutes you talk about uh, power dynamics and how somehow uh, all of us is um, trapped into a cage. <laughs> uh, thank you, that's a great question. Uh, so I love making short films so much. I love, love, love making short films. If I could. I would make them all the time if there was the funding and the resources to be able to make them. With regards to the idea, it, I think the themes that you brought up, which are isolation and um, power dynamics, a lot of my work tends to play on this theme. Mm -hmm. So it was an opportunity to revisit what is a very comfortable place for me, which is loneliness and when and where we get to use our power. Uh, and. I'm reminded of when I was younger, I'm very muscular, not actually muscular, mm -hmm. but my personality is very muscular, I'm very alpha, and I had always found myself being attracted to the idea of masculinity, mm -hmm. because masculine felt very muscular to me, and I'd had a, I think it was a teacher or a friend had said, rather than thinking of masculine as, say, strong or muscular, how do we engage femininity as also being strong and so he tended to be attracted to words like solar and lunar and so when using solar to be sort of like your your sun power mm -hmm. and to use lunar as your kind of moon power and lunar being more feminine and solar being more masculine so i think that also inside of the work there is an opportunity for me to be able to play inside of both solar and lunar power and how did you work visually on this project because it's uh, shot mostly in one location and this beautiful house um, has so many um, architecture um, references and you play with uh, all the spaces you had a chance to work. I love, I love architecture, I think that the film tells you that for sure and space Space and costume are such an important part of storytelling for me. Uh, I think that both, both your production design and your styling are a way to telegraph to the audience the sort of culture of your piece, the, the attitude of your piece, right? And that is to say that if there was no dialogue, you would still be able to understand the tonality of where you were. And so the space felt so integral to our story because say if all of the information inside of it felt confusing you would still feel the drama of the environment right the environment would still be able to communicate to you the house the house also talks right and it creates this great space for a kind of not only isolation but it also is a great container for the humor inside of the work one element that really impressed me is that you um, insert animals in this storytelling <laughs> and for me they are some sort of relief from the chaos of the world and I would like to know if you uh, choose to insert them in this storytelling because of that or, or if there is another um, reason why you choose to, to put them inside your work. You know I really, I really wanted to work with animals and uh, generally in film when you're working on a movie, there are three things that are sort of like nightmares. It's um, babies, animals, and driving, right? Like all of those are like hell. Um, and I thought, I hadn't really worked with that many animals before, always because of how much time it takes. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of patience to be had. And I, I love birds, so I was like, definitely want a bird. And then I think I'm a tortoise, or I, I used to be a tortoise at some point, and so I also wanted a tortoise, and I'm obsessed with dogs, and I just thought, it's two days, even if everything's going terribly, because these animals are here, it will sort of animate us all, like we'll always feel joy. Whenever we get to be by the bird, we'll be like, the bird. <laughs> and whenever by the turtle, we're like, oh, but the turtle. And same with the dog, there was sort of like a injecting a kind of um, emotional therapy for everyone that mm -hmm. no matter how stressful we were we could always look at that animal and feel a kind of relief. Miu Miu Women's Tales is also an opportunity for female, uh, female directors to um, let their voices roar in a certain way. Yeah. But I would like to know which are the female directors that inspire you to become who you are today as a director? I would say first and foremost it would be Agnes Varda. Uh, and not because I remember, I can remember being like 20 years old and seeing Cleo from five to seven and 
wondering who made this movie and realizing that a woman had made it and that she was a woman working inside of a period in cinema that was so aggressively male dominated it's still aggressively male dominated mm -hmm. but particularly at her time right to have been a part of the french new wave among you know what was a five six strong really aggressive male directors with very clear voices and to have like made a lane for herself as a woman working at that time is like to me so sexy and i found myself I think attracted to this idea of being able to be an only one, right? Mm -hmm. I think now as I get older, I am more turned on or attracted by the idea of being many, but I had been raised in a way where if like, you can make a lane for yourself and be the only one, what a huge accomplishment. And I think now it's very much the opposite. It's like, I can make a lane for myself and also make room for others. Mm -hmm. Uh, with Zola, you demonstrate that uh, we can make a great movie starting from a tweet. And I would like to know uh, <laughs> um, for you, um, what, what, what uh, brings you to a, a project, which is the, the main element that you want to um, tell with your movies, which is the storytelling you are attracted? When it comes to, so with Zola, it was a, there was a good story. It was, it did start from a Twitter thread, but she told an amazing story. It was, it was funny, it was stressful, uh, it was surprising, it was totally electric. And to me, it was a gift to be able to tell Zola's story. Mm -hmm. And what generally draws me to any storytelling is, I think I have to first ask myself, is this a world I want to live inside of? Could I live here? If I had to live, if I suddenly had to be trapped inside the movie, could I live on this planet? And I think if I can live on the planet, then it's possible for me to sort of like build a foundation inside of it, right? Like that's where my house will be. We're gonna put wallpaper up there. This is gonna be the furniture. You know, it's like to be able to inhabit the space. I think that's the first. And I mean, it's different from piece to piece, but it's, are there strong characters inside of this? Uh, Is there humor? I have to have humor. And it has to also be uncomfortable. Those are like my pillars of uh, making work. Uh, in um, Miu Miu Women's Tales uh, universe, directors are free to uh, share their ideas, to make the short movies they want to do without boundaries. But in other projects, you have to fight for your ideas. I think of, of a movie about um, a movie like Zola, uh, which is really impressive uh, uh, for uh, the story, but also visually. Uh, and you work with, uh, with Hey24, which is one of the most incredible environment to create a movie today but in your career did you have to fight for uh, express your voice with freedom always You're, there's always fighting but i think that fighting is a part of how you articulate your own sort of uh, purpose right like i think that had there not been friction I wouldn't be able to have seen what I meant. Like, I think you need some obstruction to actually make work, or I do. At least I need parameters. Uh, I need to be able to see, I don't know, maybe I'm not putting it right, but I think like friction feels very necessary to me. I'm not talking about fighting necessarily, like I don't mean mm -hmm. fighting or arguing, but I think that it feels for me super necessary for my work to have something to kind of bump into, to have something to fight. I don't want everyone to always say yes to me. And I hope that as I get to, as, as work comes to me a little bit easier or as doors open for me more, I hope that there are always people around me who say no, because no only makes you better. Thank you so much for Thank your you time. Thank you so much. Thank I really you. appreciate it. Thank